Hey, what's up everyone? Tetrick85 here with some more fun with FIFA 10. And this match is going to feature Hoffenheim versus Bayern Munich. Now, I'm not going to be at least a bit shy to say that I'm, I am a fan of the Bundesliga, and I'm also, and Hoffenheim is one of those teams that I just can't help but root for. And I know the whole, one of the big reasons why they're in the Bundesliga is because they got money. But having said that, their payroll is still substantially less than that of Bayern Munich. As you can see, Bayern Munich focus plays down the wings and to get across their strikers. Their strong focus is on exploit, they're exploiting the wide areas of the pitch, and they will send an extra man forward to support an attack. As you can see, Ribery, the pretty bad picture of them. <laughs> but yeah, as I can see on my... Uh, lineup here. I'm going to switch to a 4-2-2 instead of a uh, my default to 4-1-2-1-2. And I'm also going to replace Fabian Johnson with Daniel Williams and I'm also going to substitute Isaac Vorsar with Chris. That way I have two cent strong central midfielders in the middle of the field. Especially against a team that has a dynamic attack like Bayern Munich. As a matter of fact, I forgot to, before this game, uh, send Fabian Johnson to Borussia Mönchengladbach. But yeah, Bayern Munich is just one of those teams that, I gotta be honest, I kind of dread facing off against them because they are one of the best teams in, the, in this game and they can definitely hurt you if you're not aware of what they're capable of. You see, I'm replacing Tebo with Chinedu Obasi. Now, I have Obasi and Ibisevic up front. Neither one of them still play for Offenheim. As a matter of fact, Ibisevic plays for Stuttgart, while Obasi plays for Schalke. And I'm going to be placing Tebu on, on the bench, or, or Vice, rather, on the bench with Tariq al Hunosi, which is still on the team last time I checked, so... And you see Shabby Alonso, though, came to Bayern Munich from... Real Madrid. He also played for Real Sociedad and Liverpool in his career. As a matter of fact, it was with Real Sociedad he made a name and was able to get a big money move to Liverpool. What makes this Bayern team scary is their formation. They got the one strong central midfielder that they have in Xabi Alonso, plus they got the two attacking midfielders, plus the two wingers to help out the attack. And they got the lone striker. As you can see, there's no question which team is which. As you can see, Hildebrand hanging on to the crossbar there. Ryan Babel, a former Liverpool player as well. Danny Williams, the American international, now plays for Reading. And you can see the uh, Bayern's uh, lineup there. Very strong team. Arturo Vidal, the most recent acquisition from Juventus in. Uh, Douglas Costa, another new addition, is on the bench for them. So you hold a bad stuber there. Hold a bad stuber, rather. As you can probably tell right off the bat, I'm trying to get used to how to play against this Bayern team because they are extremely tricky to play against and see Obasi hitting the post there, which is not a bad effort considering how good Bayern's defense is. But unless you're playing against this team, you're going to struggle quite a bit facing off against them. The same goes with like Manchester United or Barcelona. What can he do here? Uh, that was kind of a questionable thing there. That probably could have been a penalty. I know if that was me doing that, they would have a penalty on me. But as you see, Ryan Babel was able to clean up the mess in that box, and it's one nothing. Ryan Babel, very dynamic player for Hoffenheim here. He was good when he was with Liverpool. Now he plays over in the Middle East. Thomas Mueller trying to spearhead the attack here. But yeah, these two teams played over this weekend, and Hoffenheim uh, suffered a heartbreaking loss to them, as you can see Obasi scoring there. But normally, one, one, one wouldn't think of a 2 1 loss to Bayern as being heartbreaking. Breaking, especially since Bayern was probably the favorite to beat Hoffenheim, but this past weekend was the third match in which Bayern was able to snatch victory away from uh, a draw that uh, 
I have to admit, Hoffenheim looked pretty hard off, and it was disappointing not to see them go uh, get anything, especially when they were at home at the Rhein-Necker Arena. But what did them in, though, was a uh, missed penalty by Eugen Polanski, which I do not have on this Hoffenheim team. I, I think he, I have him on mine, but and you see there my defense kind of fell asleep there. Thomas Mueller, for some reason, did not bury that to Bayern Munich. And once again, I'm having a hard time, especially early on in this match. I just, and this was me just trying to get used to how this Bayern team works, and as you can see, Bayern being able to maintain possession in my own side of the field. Marvin Klomper, I think, I know last season, I'm pretty sure he played for uh, Paderborn, who ended up getting relegated from the Bundesliga. Chris with a nice tackle there. Obasi with the other counter attack. And a good finish there, beating Manuel Neuer, who is one, easily the t one of the top rated goalkeepers, not just in the Bundesliga, but in all of Europe. Yeah, this Hoffenheim team, if you know how to handle them, they, they could be quite scary on attack. This is Xabi Alonso. Xabi Alonso with the ball there. Very good central midfielder, among the best in Europe. Sehad Salijevic, the uh, Bosnian international, along with Ibisevic. They won't give their opponents any time to settle, they do press the ball. Danny Williams gets dispossessed by Arturo Vidal, which... Like Neymar, they made him white in this game instead of black. Which I have no idea why. Saliovic. Trying to get him free. He's not an easy Some slick passing there by Hoffenheim. And look at his goal by Bicevic. <laughs> that was quite a goal. And you know what? I was just. Uh, to be truthful, I went to hit pass to the, in order to do a cross pass to, instead of a uh, a shot like that. But luckily, I, I lucked out there. I was able to sneak it into that far post there, just barely. But that was a heck of a goal by Veda Adibisevic. Which a bit of trivia, he scored the first ever goal for Bosnia Herzegovina in the World Cup. As a matter of fact, their appearance in the 2014 World Cup was their first ever appearance in a major international tournament. And he was actually raised in St. Louis, Missouri. So he could have opted to play for the United States if he wanted to, but he opted to go with Bozzi instead. And I have to say, him and Ed and Jekko formed quite the partnership in that team. And I was very happy to see Bosnia clinch a spot in the World Cup. As you can see, I'm starting to get my bearings here, which right there I should have been called for offside, but luckily I didn't. Ryan Babel getting his second goal of the game. I'm trying to think offhand. I think Hoffenheim usually has the name of the player on the bottom of the shirt too, but for some reason in this game they don't. I don't know, I could I could very well be wrong on that. And see the nice pass there and Babel was able to squeak it in there for his hat trick. Very good shot coming from a very good pass. We could score goals. Like it's it's and congratulating him. Still with Hoffenheim. He's been with the team for quite a long time now. See, Neuer had... He, I can't say he didn't have a chance, but he just wasn't quick enough to get in on that in front of that babble shot. Danny Williams with another impressive tackle there. Certainly be a prominent uh, player on my U.S. squad when I finally play international games. And right there, Babel once again. This first half turned into the Ryan Babel show in terms of ability because he's really showed how strong of a player he is, especially collecting that rebound from Moyo, which is very odd from him. Usually, when you play see a game in real life, that doesn't happen. And another thing you don't see happen often too is Bayern getting this easily dispossessed, which I just committed a foul there, but you see Ribery ready for the free kick there, which really was, was as much of a threat. Timo Hildebrand, another strong uh, German international goalkeeper. 
I'm not sure, but the last time I saw him, he played for Schalke, which is the rival team of Borussia Dortmund. Chris wasn't able to bury that, which I'm not even going to get upset with that because he's not a striker. He's actually one of my central midfielders alongside Danny Williams. Now is that handball? Ribery, some nice footwork yes. there, but un unfortunately for him, he got caught for a handball, which I didn't get to see there, but... Saliovic. Saliovic trying to make something happen here. Pass, once again, Babel scoring his fifth goal of the game for Hoffenheim. And to say that he had a monster first half would be an understatement because he certainly stepped up to the plate, especially against the strong Bayern Munich defense. And looking at this Bayern's lineup, they are definitely a scary team to play against. It has been one way traffic. They're actually quite a deep team, too. And they got uh, Thiago Alcantara on the bench as well as Douglas Costa. They also got Nils Peterson and Claudio Pissarro on the bench, too. So, as you see, my 100% shot accuracy, over 60% possession. Bayern actually has the better passing throughout the first half, but considering who I'm playing against, that's actually pretty good because Bayern can, you, can dominate a game pretty quickly. As the second half starts, I win a throw-in there, which is very rare considering I don't get very many throw-ins in a game. But then again, as I've been playing the segment, there's a lot of things that's been happening that didn't ha occur in the first couple games, like corner kick goals and three kicks and penalties and that. And I didn't see Obasi getting his hat trick of the game. Another key player for Hoffenheim during the first half, and that continues here in the second half. And as you'll find out later, it's actually his striking partner that steals the show here in the second half, Obisevic. Ryan Babel going along the wing here. Byron very lethal on the wings, and so I decided to replicate that here. Bisevich nearly poking it in there. Kobasi trying to make things happen there. Wasn't able to pivot that shot, which he probably could have passed to someone in that box, but doesn't have to take chances against this Bayern team. And see there, I win another throw in. Danny Williams trying to get into position there. Bad pass to Bisevic there. Mathieu Del Pierre there alongside Comp are my two center backs for Salievich. Hoffenheim. Salievich is going down the wing here. Can he deliver? Abasi with the pass to Abisevich, but Bappel was actually blocking his way there. And Abisevich with a nice turn and shot though for the goal, scoring his second of the game. And that's plenty more that come from from the Stuttgart player. I have to admit, whenever I first started following Hoffenheim, when they first got promoted, I was sad to see him getting uh, transferred over to Stuttgart because I thought he was one of the most important players, and he's definitely an exciting player to watch, Vedar Abisevich. Of course, it doesn't hurt that he was uh, raised in St. Louis, Missouri, so he does have that little bit of American. Tries to play off the pass to Abasi. Abasi, I don't think, was anticipating that. Rubicevic gets his hat trick after what could have been another offside call against me, but luckily I didn't get the call there. So in essence, I actually got away with two offside calls so far in this game. But hey, against uh, Bayern Munich, I'll take those bits of luck. You see, it's 11 nothing to Hoffenheim. I just love that shade of blue that they wear. Now what are they going to make of this? See Obasi trying to make something happen here. Bisevich hits the crossbar. Williams wasn't able to control the ball in the, in the box. And I have no idea what Chris was trying to do here. See, he's trying to make his way around the wing. He's actually making himself more fatigued doing that. And see Bisevich with a quick fire hat trick in the second half. And what Ryan Babel was the first half in Hoffenheim, Ibisevic was for the second half, and he was an absolute beast. See, 
Obasi wasn't able to get the ball there. Chris with a nice tackle there. Not a nice tackle that time. Compo completely missed Aryan Robin. Which I was very lucky that he didn't shoot there because if he would have shot, he would have scored. And no, he wouldn't have shot on his left foot either. <laughs> Which is a common criticism for Aryan Robin because people take note that he never ever uses his left foot, ever. And that is one of his common criticisms that he, he's too dependent on one foot. Defenders in control of that situation. Though I, I have seen him use his left foot on certain occasions, but definitely not enough. And I can definitely see where that bit of criticism comes from. As Hoffenheim with good defense there, and Williams was able to start this counterattack here. Once again, close to being offside there. And Obasi with his fourth goal of the game. Making it 13 nothing for Hoffenheim. Which is weird because you see HOF up there. To me, being an NFL, watching the NFL, that puts me in a Hall of Fame like the Hall of Fame game. Chris with another sloppy tackle there. He's pretty much 50-50 when it comes to tackles in this game. Blockhide wasn't able to chase down Mueller quick enough. And Hildebrand was able to scoop it up before Mueller was able to tap it in. Which I was very lucky not to lose possession of the ball there. And, and at this point, things were starting to get kind of dicey for me and I didn't want to lose my clean sheet. So, this is going to be the bit of the second half where I waste time here. Mainly with passes between Comper and Del Pierre and Brafhide. And also Chris gets involved with the passing too. It's not really much to talk about here. I tell you what, it was nice Just, uh, to be, be ahead by this score line. I didn't anticipate scoring at least 10 goals against his Bayern team. And Especially after seeing them lose that game this past weekend against Bayern. I was not happy with that. And to play as them against this Bayern team and be able to give them a shellacking like this put a smile on my face. This may be cheap, but hey, whatever works. I know uh, Bayern likes to do this possession game too, so I figure, you know what, might as well fight fire with fire here. And that's the end of the game. As you can see, Ryan Babel, one of my stars of the game right there, one of my top three players for this team alongside Obasi and Abisevic. You get to see some of the highlights there. See Abisevic poking it in. See, 13 goals, 7 assists, which I think the 7 assists is the highest that I've had since I started my segment. Passing percentage identical at 85%. And also I got two thirds of the, of the possession too. And of course Pizarro coming on for Schweinsteiger, which was the one substitute I was afraid of, but Luckily, he didn't make any impact, which kind of surprises me a little bit. Because I know Pizarro can be quite lethal, especially when you're facing off against him. But yeah, I was very satisfied with this game, and it was definitely one of those games that I was surprised to get that kind of result. I got right up there with Real and me scoring 16 goals against Real Batiste, so this game definitely put a smile on my face, and... Um, Goes to show how good this Hoffenheim team can be and how you can manage against Bayern Munich. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So, thank you guys for watching this and see you again next time.